the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself a prudent to god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth glory be to my ave sitkanu to the highest and peace be to the mankind on this earth to those who believe in my lord and savior as the only savior to have their eternal life and in order to know that great peace demands that you walk by knowing the knowledge of Christ not being once again entangled into your cogs of carnality of your soul's self defense mechanisms the self justification the self absorption and the self deception but in return even to the believers this is of a great reality for you all to know without being in the controlling mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit there is nothing that you can think you can achieve there is nothing that you can think you have grown up there is nothing that you have really thought that you have been there to so with the hope that you are going to certainly review or receive it back and so unless you are there in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit and whenever you are having your mental attitude since clustered up to rule over you take it granted dear brethren you are never in the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit therefore for an unbeliever to know what is the true purpose wherewith he has been given this great joy to understand the great peace to really experience and live in it and to know that the day of the god or the day of the lord whichever the possible manner it may be for them to understand beginning from the day of our lord and savior jesus christ you should know how well it will be for you all to certainly enjoy the ages of the ages which are to come the short span of time which is nothing but even the sight of the lord could be equivalent to one hour or two hours this short span of the time of every believer pilgrimage trip demands that he redeem and purchase the time and not let go the time for the things of his old sin nature ruling over him at the same time for the unbeliever it is for them to get out from the wrath of the lord by believing upon the lord by becoming regeneration so that by faith alone in christ alone no gimmicks no righteousness of the laws as such today we have been noting many people who want to teach until unless you do the deeds of righteousness of the law you will be you will not be saved but the word of the lord says it is not by your righteousness but the righteousness of god which will be imputed and credited to your account the only thing that requires on your part is that your volition to say that you believe upon that lord and savior jesus christ by faith the lord in christ alone and not having any further gimmicks on it not having any further tricks on it but today's christendom it has been made tough for those unbelievers not to believe by faith alone in christ alone in my lord at the same time it has been made tough for them to get back into fellowship by using their privacy of priesthood by confession of their sins and they have their own gimmicks they have their own pious nature they have their own thinking and they want to deceive in each and every mannerism of their life to tell this could be worth or that could be worth or this could be the reason or that could be the reason if not they are not going to be in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit really all these things lead them to go astray from the real path of the doctrine therefore whenever we begin our discourse to understand the word of the lord that it is a must you should be in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit without being in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit you cannot truly understand what is the true intention of you being kept alive even after salvation without the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit there is never a time for you all to truly being to understand this great multi flavious if not the much variegated color wisdom of christ and if it is not been there in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit no matter however you are wherever you are you are not going to get it therefore rebound is a must 
without rebound it is not possible if you are there in your cluster of cogs of carnality of your own mental attitude sins never you can get back into the fellowship of light get the holy spirit until and unless you give everything into the hands of the lord it is lord who is going to take care of those things and we are here not to worry about them because everything when you are given back into the hands of the lord it is lord's matter to take care from the supreme court of heaven and we should be very cautious enough that we should never lose the time we should be very alert enough that we are not grieving and squelching and lying to the indwelling ministry of lord god the holy spirit but rather we have been making our account clear because you have much burdened work you have much witnesses to be made in this church age you have to glorify the lord to the maximum and in return you have to honor lord's word above his name to the maximum our lord everything when he started with prayer including even the night days which was been there for him the moments of the day which could be for us available but the moments of the night even he wanted not to be losing them but to make them as a blessed moments he even went and prayed he never let them go so easily it is a privilege for every believer in this right and unique dispensation of the church age to pray in the spirit being in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit will cause you to have your arabic kneeling before the lord without prayer samuel rutherford tells and if he is not able to spend his time for more than 8 to 10 hours it will be the recorded as ill day i l l ill day sick day because the day is not having that cherish and nourishment which could be for him as such it has to be for each and every pastor teacher if he is not exegeting the word of the lord or isolating the word of the lord or categorizing the word of the lord and if he is not able to teach them as per the proper mannerism of dispensations that day should be reckoned to him not just like a ill day or sick day as samuel rutherford tells it should be reckoned in his life as dead because we have not done that which is our real work to be done having zealousness without having proper knowledge is certainly sin and whatsoever is not of faith is sin and we have been given this great burden to be a witnesses for his truth better than us this creation would have been more witnesses do you know what is the blessed part for you Though a man may try to discover and invent and reproduce as much as possible for him the equivalence of the nature or in fact even the nature including every part and power of it cannot produce to you one human soul it cannot produce in you that divine spark and that divine spark which has been given by the lord god almighty to make a man after his own image demands in this great and unique dispensation of the church age to be renewed in kai hosi et his thesalethia in the true holiness and in the benignity of truth that this believer should grow up that this believer should latch upon to think the word of the law that this believer should have number one priority to look where with he has been made even to be kept alive after salvation and after salvation he is he redeeming the time purchasing the time is he purchasing the time for god's greatest glory by using rebound or is he been oriented to look the true purpose why even the angels are rubber wrecking into it to look what you have been given and this angels are only spectators looking upon the plans of redemption from the sidelines but they are not participants in it you as a believer having this flesh you as a believer in the lord and savior jesus christ being indwelled by the trinity are a participant of this great much variegated wisdom of christ and by the church the true purpose why the church has been intended says philip ephesians 3:10 when they are having their enlightenment the fortizo not the way of telema not the way of blepo or the not the way of they could see or view 
it has been called for us to enlightenment for tizo how they can be enlightened until unless they have the revolution to be enlightened in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Until unless they get out from the cluster of crags of carnality, from their self-justification, self-absorption and self-deception. Until unless they get out from their bitterness, jealousy, vindictiveness, vituperation, maligning, gossiping, judging. Until unless they get out from this mental attitude, sin, the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit can never and never control them. And as long as you are thinking that you are being having those mental attitudes sins towards your fellow brethren or towards any member of the human race, whether it is a believer or unbeliever, you make it granted when you are a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, never let God the Holy Spirit controls you until unless you use rebound and the confession of your sins for which you are being alive in your mental attitude sins. No way, no chance at all. You may try to come and give to the church millions of dollars. You may come and try to play in your emotional ecstasy, gibberishly jumping along and dancing along in the choir so that now your mind could relax after listening to a song. This mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit is not possible to be controlling for you until and unless you use rebound, the privacy of your priesthood, the confession of your sins. And casting all your worries in the sight of the Lord because he careth for you. If there is anyone having envy against you, wrath against you, bitterness against you, you pay back to the Lord. And Lord says, vengeance belongs to me. I will pay them back. But in the meantime, what you should do? You should seek not to lose the blessed moments of glory from you and from your life that has been given for you when you have been counting each and every day to the praise and the glorification of the great Lord God Almighty. Each and every day being certainly counted. Each and every breath of a millionth of a second has been certainly taken. And we are having something to be noted with the unseen powers. One more creation, the first creation, the angels. And the church has much thing to be done to that in order that by the church might be made known to the principalities and the powers, the archers and the rulers. In the heavenly places, very much, very much needed for us to know today. That in the heavenly places, through this great intermediate agency known as church, the outcalled people, in this alakene ketesis, they might make known to the principalities and powers the much variegated wisdom of God, if not the much colored wisdom of Christ. The Polu Paikilos. What are these great unsearchable riches in Christ, says Ephesians 3 9? And in Ephesians 3 10, we have been written by the same mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in this great mystery doctrine that the true purpose of the church is to make known to those principalities and powers who are there in the heavenly places this great, much variegated wisdom of Christ. And this is the privilege where the pastor teacher should be appointed in the church to teach this great, much variegated wisdom of our Lord. Having a zeal without proper knowledge, they perish, says Romans 10 2, the Israelites. Is this the same happening with us in the church age? Is this the same that is happening in us, though we have been given this great alakene ketesis under the polytheism of privileges to do his work effectively and graciously under his ministry? And are we not able to make up to manifest the great power of that great Lord God Almighty? To the principalities and the powers and the rulers, though they are not participants of this plan, they are just being the sidelines of it. Are we able to make them, though they are rubber-wrecking to look, says 1 Peter 1.12. Are we able to make them to look and to realize and understand by our holy manner walk of life? Are we able to make the church as a university, the pastor teacher being the dean, and every believer being a professor to teach to those angels who come? And certainly the church should teach, should teach to those angels.
what the church is teaching today to the world far less they can think of this unseen forces they are witnessing among the midst of these unbelievers as one among the religion heads like there are other temples and mosques so is one among the church they have not really understood the church is a foundation and pillar for truth and people will come there to learn knowledge it is a spiritual house requiring spiritual sacrifice of your own self so that you can give spiritual offerings to the lord which is nothing but growing up by giving yourself as the living sacrifice unto christ by the renovation of your thinking that which is good acceptable and perfect according to that will of god and while you are doing this angels are still rubber racking to look what the pulpit will certainly teach each and every day but this great mystery doctrine of the church age in nowadays pulpits it is been made buried the kleptes lestes misthotes thupas the canapes the tiflos and sherurus minded pastors have exchanged the real duty of the bona fide work of the pulpit for the purpose to which it has been made says in ezra the purpose of the altar wood which has been made was to teach so is today the altar is been made where you can come to give a continual fire which will be burning 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 says leviticus 6:30 the fire shall never go out from the altar it should be always burning likewise the believers to whom that the word of the lord is been taught by the spirit controlled pastor teacher being faithful enough to be prepared under the ministry of lord god the holy spirit his every word will be a fire the way how in luke chapter 24 it stands written for us to understand when those two men on the way when they were walking to elemas that is what cleopas will tell to them does not our heart was being burned when he was opening the scriptures from moses till to all the prophets the way how he has to rise again from the third day the way what he has done those two believers they were being really burned really burnt in the sense their heart was burning repentance so will be the pastor teacher words and the believers will come there to learn the word and certainly change they will be like the wood and the fire will consume them and this daily burning of the fire morning and evening is the right privilege for the bona fide gifted pastor teachers in accurately dividing the word of the lord as long as they have been kept alive on this earth in fulfilling the great protocol plan of christ by daily teaching he has been given no other work if not he has been not called as a pastor teacher and in his daily teaching it will be like a fire which will be burning in their hearts when they listen to the word and they will certainly change to become a witnesses to those principalities and powers by the church when they become the professors to those angels by rightly dividing the word of the lord and they will have in their life the much wisdom 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 the key for all your bitterness or your mental attitude since to be erased demands wisdom wisdom is in written nothing but sound bible doctrine only when your righteousness has been proved only when you're walking according to the principal integrity of the word of the lord and if you have been secluded you will never understand the seclusion which our lord has made in proverbs 27 and he tells for us and i have secluded and kept sound doctrine only for those who are righteous but every believer in this church age has been made to share the absolute righteousness of god which they don't deserve which they don't work which they don't earn but at the same time they have been given even to prove that righteousness a workman are proved are proved are proved no matter however it is after salvation you should know that in this wilderness of pilgrimage trip given for us every day you have to be faithful enough to seek and search the truth the parathuomai which we have been understanding yesterday's tape when they are having their ready mind willing mind it will be the bona fide duty of the pastor teacher wherewith we can read in second corinthians 8:16 and 17 to tell lord will put that care diligence care spaudiza eagerness and earnest care and when that eager and earnest care has been given this minister the titus who has been there for them he tells apostle paul concerning him he was forward for all the things and he was preeminently diligent 
and he went for you all to teach. Only when you have been having that ready mind to listen the word. Until unless you are not having that ready mind, no pastor has the diligence for you all to teach. Though he'll be burning inside for you all to teach every day. If he has been a bona fide gifted pastor and a male believer alone. If his kleptes, lestes, misthotes, thupas, or if his canapes, thiflos, and sheruras, never he will have that burning desire, neither that care will be given to him, because the head of the department of the church wants this church to be glorious one, and through this church he wants to teach to those principalities and powers in the heavenly realms that every believer, every believer, ordinary believer is a professor to the angels, dear brother. Does not John the Baptist tell, I came here to be a witness for the truth, but I am not the Christ. He is greater than me. I am not even able to loosen his lace of the shoe. Likewise, every believer have to know we have come here to be a witnesses for that great truth and in Ephesians 3.10 the word of the Lord writes for us you are come here to witness not only to this world which has been seen and even to the world which is unseen which is nothing but the angels the principalities and the powers who are constantly oriented to this angelic conflict Many of the pastors today who have not understanding or who have not made into their mind about this angelic conflict have certainly made the scriptures to be 100% error in their mind to understand them. If the human race doesn't have his origin to look from where and why he was being made in answer to, in return to the answer of this angelic conflict, then certainly no matter however genius he may be, no matter however thinking mind he may have like great oratories people or dictators, he will never get oriented to the plan of God or he will never know why man has been made on this earth. He should have something to be known about this angelic conflict and Bible is very much open about this angelic conflict. And in Ephesians 3.10 it tells the reason why the church has been made. What a privilege it is for us that we ordinary believers have been given to witness for that great truth. What a great privilege it is for us. And when the true bona fide gifted pastor teacher, when he daily exegetes, isolates and categorizes, do you know what happens? Your heart will be burnt off to realize. And it will cause you to change. Repent, change of mind, metanoia. And it will change to give for you to put number one priority for doctrine. It will change for you to think that you are having work with the principalities and the powers in the heavenly realms where Lord has made and by the church when you attend the daily teaching of the church you will certainly become the professor to the angels in return that is an unseen ministry. The seen ministry is that you will become an ambassador for this great Lord and by this ambassadorship you are going to work in the ministry of reconciliation and by this ministry of reconciliation you will make as many as people to become once again the disciples of the Lord because of the great burden which has been laid down upon us the great commission go on to the uttermost parts of the earth and make disciples for me disciples means the daily learners if you are not a daily learner for the word of the Lord never you are being considered to be as a Christian far less you can think you can use your gimmicks you can use your tricks and you can be ready available for this work and that work and cause the people not to understand the word a weekly once is never the ministry for the church daily 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 every day you have to exegete the word every day you have to isolate the word every day you have to categorize the word with the proper dispensing technique of dispensations that is every day and there is no excuse for it. Neither there is a pleading of ignorance for you at the judgment seat of Christ. Our Lord. Which begins after the day of rapture. And ends after seven years. Afterwards we will be beginning with the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. The millennium. The parousia. The personal presence of our Lord. In ruling over the millennium. And after the millennium rule the day of Lord God Almighty. The day of Yahweh Sidkino, which will be for ages to ages, for years to years to come. 
and for your short span of time on this earth that you will be witnessing for those unseen and seen people on this earth among the midst of this perverse crooked generation only by holding forth the word of the Lord as like your light and only by speaking out the words filled with salt so that your every word could be a wise counsel to unbelievers as well as to believers when you are able to deal them with proper wisdom and not having your mental attitude sins do you know only for this short span of time being a witness for the truth how much more my lord will reward you those seven years of the tribulation which is happening on this earth and our judgment in the heaven at the bema throne of christ when you be turning out to become a winner believer in the Lord as long as you have been kept alive on this earth by reaching for MGG, going through spiritual self-esteem, the only unique spiritual life, the principle of Yusabian, going through spiritual self-esteem and then moving for spiritual autonomy and then getting back to spiritual maturity and when you are passed on to become MGG and every breath that you take on this earth even you have been still kept alive to reach for the only purpose you can tell to this people. For me to live is Christ and to die is profitable. But my necessary has been laid down for you to keep you alive so that you also can become an MGG believer, invisible, invisible hero in Christ. And leave behind a great legendary impact to those angels. And that is what the real purpose where Apostle Paul tells. In nothing I shall be ashamed, but in everything I shall be magnified in that great Lord God Almighty only when I witness, witness, witness for the truth. And Apostle Paul believed the minister life is immortal until the work of the Lord has been achieved because he doesn't have time to decay in his own mental attitude sins which have a very much adverse effect upon his health. And besides that the iniquity is what he has not confessed. With our Lord he requires a clear account, a righteous account. Does not David pray in Psalms number 4, seven, chapter 7, verses 4 and 5? If I have done anything wrong, O Lord, if I have done and paid unfaithful, if I have not shown pityness to others, let the enemy certainly destroy my soul and let me be buried in the hell or in the mud. That sort of great righteousness which every believer should pray to the Lord. Lord, search me diligently. Know me, know my heart, know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way, O Lord, but lead me in the way of everlasting. If I have done anything wrong, knowingly or unknowingly, the confession of your sins should cause you now to turn from cursing to blessing only by the privacy of your priesthood because in this church age we are being called to purchase the time, to redeem the time. Not to waste our time in legal activities. Not to think that we are been purchasing the time and we are been doing good works. That is enough so that we can be back in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. No, no way, no chance. Even the minute thought, the imagination behind that thought, even the word or deed, whichever you have done, which is certainly grieving and squelching and lying to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you need to confess it. You need to cite it. Because our Lord has not spared his own son on the cross, how much more you and me. We have been given this great privilege right from the day of your salvation by faith alone in Christ alone being baptized into that great royal ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit and being joined to that great royal family of God. Which has been in heaven and on the earth, we are manifesting the same family as long as we are alive on this earth. And this great royal family of God should be a witnesses to teach. Not only to the unseen forces, or not only to the seen forces, but also to the unseen forces. The seen forces are the human being towards unbeliever, you witness an evangelical work. Towards a believer, you are going to tell, exhorting each and every other as long as it is being called as today. You exhort and encourage one another so that they should not fall. But rather on return, you encourage them to look upon that great word of the Lord and sustain in the truth those who are weak and cause them to confess their sins. Because by your daily manner of walk of life, because every word to be seasoned with salt, you should tell to them 
that the medicine to your flesh, that the medicine to your sicknesses is nothing but the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord is also a bone marrow to your bones. The word of the Lord is a healing for your navel cord, the placenta, which they can find out today as rising the stem cells therapy. Even to that, the building blocks of your basic life will be certainly given medicine only by the word of the Lord. Even the navel, that's what in Proverbs 3, 7 we read. Whichever, however manner you may think, however manner you may consider, however manner of possibilities that you may rise to think, in each and every manner you need to find only one thing, the word, the word, the word. And in clearly of the mystery epistle which Apostle Paul writes for us in Ephesians 3, these three chapters of 1, 2 and 3 are of a great doctrine, dear brethren. These are your life. This is your purpose. This is your plan why Lord has kept you alive. And in 3.10 he tells the manifold wisdom of God by the church. It's all about learning doctrine. It's all about learning the word of the Lord. It's all about witnessing for his truth. The right position, the right walk, the right doctrine, the right destiny of the church is being mentioned for us in Ephesians 3, the manifold wisdom of God. But we are burying this Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians. When we go back and read in the book of Philippians, he certainly goes to tell what are we in the polity of privileges of Christ, the heavenly citizenship, the high calling of the Lord. Why are we still minding the earthly things on this earth? And behave your pattern of walk, which is certainly straight, says Ephesians, according to the manner wherewith you have been chosen and we have been called. The practical application from chapter 4, 5 and 6. These three are doctrinal applications and in the doctrinal applications we find the true purpose of the church is to show forth this great manifold wisdom of God. It is to be a witnesses for this great manifold wisdom of Christ. And this will be proclaimed by those who are having this true bona fide gift. Not every cluck can come to understand this mystery doctrine. The church age corpus, which has been considering the main driving force, is been upon Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians. And if the minister is not teaching about these things, it will be very sad for us to think. Then the way on the road to where the two people were walking and talking, and we can read in Luke chapter 24, there we can find a great discourse telling to us that we should learn to understand the simple principle. The man whom Lord God the Holy Spirit records and keeps for us to understand and to know what was the great reason behind it. And it causes us to think that while they were going to a village called Amamas, from Jerusalem around three score furlongs. They were talking together all these things which had happened. These things include the resurrection of our Lord in his crucifixion as well. And while they were communicating each other, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ drew near and went with them. But the word of the Lord says, their eyes were been withheld. Their eyes were been not made known what he was exactly. So that they should not know him. What, what they were doing? They were certainly talking about this Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The reason of example for me all to tell this thing is, even the mystery doctrine has been revealed and kept, but it has not been withheld now. This mystery has been made clear for us in the church age. And if they are really those people who are fearing for the word of the Lord, and if they are really discussing about Christ, and if they are really looking upon the manifold wisdom of God, then certainly this truth of mystery has been revealed for them. Only when they are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit constantly seeking. So that they also can become like Christ, conforming to the image of his dear beloved Son. 
and then furthermore and he said unto them what manner of communications are these that you are having one to another as you walk and are sad and these two people the name of the one has been mentioned the Cleopas he is telling to them our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is talking to them and, and he said what manner of communications what is this that is happening around and which you are casting toward one another, which you are discussing towards one another, and you are walking and you are having a sad countenance upon you because they have realized that they have lost their Lord. That is a very great sad part on us. Because many of the people today, they haven't realized what they are losing without being daily teaching the word of the Lord. We don't find the sad countenance upon pastor teacher face today. He is just pleasing them by wood and stubble. He is causing them not to look upon the great wisdom of the Lord through gold, silver and precious stones. By redeeming the time, purchasing the time, because the days are evil, the day is far spent and we need to be ready for the appearance of our Lord, whichever manner it may be. The rapture or whichever manner of your physical death. You should be readily available for his work. You should be readily available to do his ministry, no matter however the chips may fall. As long as you have been still kept alive, the Christian purpose is to witness for those people who are seen and to be witness for those people who are not being seen, the principalities and the powers in the heavenly realm. And in return, the angels. And the pastor teacher should train them up. Because many people are perishing, perishing, perishing without knowing the sound doctrine. Without knowing the true purpose of the church being called out. To manifest the wisdom of God, the much variegated color wisdom of God. Polypoikulos. But instead today the church has become a place of social clubs. Church has become a place for Satan's synagogue. Church has become a place for Satan's throne. Church has become a place for Satan's copulation point and producing false teachers, false cults. Who haven't even learned to understand that when the minister will speak to them, it should burn in their heart. And suddenly it should turn out those things which have been there to be burnt off and to make ashes so that there is no way point again to build them back. A point of no returning. When you have found the truth, what you will do, what all you have, you forsake it and you become the disciple of that great Lord. Because the truth itself is the key for us to know. That it is the key for us to make us free. It is the key for us to glorify that great Lord God Almighty and His name. It is only the truth. And if you have not known the truth, how many days more you want to be entangled yourself once again into the yoke of bondage of your carnality and cluster up in your mental attitude sins and grievance, question, likes, the indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit and the pastor teachers who have not believed the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit is by faith alone in Christ alone will still longer cluster up to gibberishly jump along and dance along and talk along in tongues and some of the pastors will come along to prove that their mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit indwelling in them is by their miracles and healings and certainly they will cause you to get out from the right track of the Lord these are more worse than the canapes Though this ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit is given for them, they are conscious, if at all they could stand in the presence of the Lord or in the confession of their sins through rebound when they are listening to the true word, certainly it should change them to give concentration for the manifold wisdom of God which has to be taught by the church and angels will come to learn from that university dean. Their conscience should tell them if at all they have a conscience, if they have a conscience shared, as mentioned in First Timothy, then no matter however we tell, they are going to not change. Because they are much involved in their critics, 
they are much involved in their own viewpoints of life they are much involved to tell still our lord is working through this manners and that manners when the bible says this has been seized it has been seized we cannot go against the word of the lord when the bible says a woman can never be a preacher we cannot go against the word of the lord and say why can't a woman be a preacher when the bible says it is done away it is done away and now what it is the bona fide gift of the head of the department of the church to be given for him the pastor teacher gift the evangelical gift to evangelize to the unbelievers not by miracles or healings if there are any miracles or healings to be done it will be made directly by lord god the father to that particular recipient but never it uses you as the mediator so that you can exemplify your name and cause them to divert from the true issue which is the word of the lord and cause you all to be followed so that you can still perform more miracles more healings and certainly you will be sponsored by satan not to know not to learn about the truth of the word of the lord and you will become yourself self deception or self absorbed because there are many people who are following you what for they are following you with their sicknesses to deglorify my lord the real healing for you all is nothing but to learn the word of the lord real healing is nothing but the word of the lord real survival for you all in this life upon after salvation is to grow up to the true life being chosen in every day participation of lord's table to understand and to execute this unique spiritual life this is of a real purpose dear brethren and apart from this what we are going to have nothing but to be a witness for the truth there can never be anything more than to be witnesses for his truth no matter however you may think to perform no matter however you may be as a believer in the lord and say i have been doing this i have been doing that i am a great witnesses for this i am a great witnesses for that and so many people are been following to me listen to the testimony but which i call a bragmony the way how dog brags itself it is not you who are going to do it is the grace of the lord if at all if there has been done it is not for you the credit goes even as such we the pastor teachers don't have our credit for our own self we are just like unprofitable slaves that which is our duty to be done we have to do it it is not the man it is the message we can make a better preachers from cigarette birds far less we can think to see that without me lord cannot get along it is in rivers without him you cannot even budge an inch or an mmm if not you cannot even think to take a breath in your nostrils far less you can think you can understand you can realize you can make more and you can tell to the lord lord without me you cannot survive change your thoughts change your viewpoints so our lord asks why has this sad countenance is the same thing today in our pulpits can we be with a sad countenance to understand those things and we can we are here to tell them much more than what they are really intending to listen with their weeping ears and with their itching ears heaping them those who could certainly be their mentors no way no chance we have to train them in the word we have to tell them what exactly is the word of the lord with proper exegesis every word of the lord has much more meaning for us to communicate but majority of the peoples have not understood what it is to be in christ with faithfulness the love of money is causing them to become evil and they have made ministry to be for money but ministry is never for money not to worry about the fellow man ostracisms not to worry when you tell the truth that the people will not give you money the ministry is for only one thing to praise and glorify my lord to the maximum and teaching his word exegeting his truth isolating his word and every day we have been called to do that work because angels are coming to listen every day angels are coming to learn from you as a professor as a believer in the lord you are a professor to those angels so they had their sad countenance and our lord asked why are you so sad while he was walking towards that village of amamas and one of them whose name was cleopas answering said to him are you a stranger that's what the point i wanted for you all to tell 
Are you a stranger to Jerusalem? And you have not known the things which have come to pass there in these days. Our Lord also will stand and ask tomorrow at the judgment seat of Christ, Were are you a stranger? Have you not known that in this great mystery doctrine of the church age, in the dispensation of the church, I have given for you much more than the most what you can certainly imagine, starting from my dear beloved son, and ending up with you all, though you grieve and squelch and lie to the ministry of light, get the Holy Spirit made a permanent abode in you to indwell, so that you could be guided for truth and could be led into everlasting truth and you could truly know the calling in Christ and you could truly be my witnesses. Like the way our Cleopas is asking my Lord, have you been a stranger? Have you not known the things that have happened in Jerusalem in these days? Certainly for every church age believer, our Lord will tell after the completion of canon given to us, preserved, though matter, however, they are searching for miracles or healings, the greatest miracle is the word of the Lord which can be have in our hand in our own translations. And which now, right now, in this 21st century, we are able to have in the original languages through proper interlinear of scriptures as well, though you don't know Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, with the interlinear scriptures digging out with the proper lexicons and their words of the dictionaries, you can certainly understand the truth. Under the guiding ministry of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit indwelling in you. Among all of these great privileges and opportunities, like the way how Cleophas would ask my Lord, are you a stranger? Likewise, are we strangers to this great mystery doctrine of the church age? Though being written and kept before the foundation of the world, now being revealed and written and kept through Apostle Paul, the doctrine, the position, the walk, and the destiny of the church being revealed, though our Lord proclaimed in Matthew 16, 18, but now through Apostle Paul, which was being committed to him, now being taught for us, are you still stranger to read those things? In Ephesians 3, 7, Apostle Paul tells, when you read this, when you have your perception, synesis, and many, a majority of the people have not read the bracketed commentary of Ephesians 3, those two great verses, when you read it, likewise our Lord was testing those clear paths to tell were you a stranger? Have you not known the things that are happening in the Jerusalem these days? So likewise it will be for each and every believer or each and every pastor, teacher who has been given this ideal gift. Are you a stranger? Have you not known what is happening right now in the church age, in the dispensation of the mentoring ministry of blood, get the Holy Spirit? The things that are happening in this Alekene Ketesus period. Are you still a stranger not to know these things? Or you will end up in death to be a stranger, not being able to understand this great mystery doctrine of the church age, which has been hidden in the past, but now being made known for us, which calls for us for the high heavenly situations, which calls for the pastor teacher in Colossians 1, 25 to 29 to completely teach in each and every mannerism of the wisdom and the doctrine given to him so that he should be pure from the blood of the church, of his flock. The exhaustive energy that you are going to spend, which are going to show forth the manifestations of Lord's suffering. And you want to be still strangers. And you want to love those things which the Bible tells. Everything on this earth will vanish off except the will of the Lord that could be done. It includes starting from believers to unbelievers. Unbelievers are lost because they have not believed in the Lord and unbelievers are being believers are being responsible for them because they have not walked a holy manner of walk of life in their life. Realizing not to be having their mental attitude sins clustered up against them, but rather forgiving them as Lord forgive them. In fact, when indeed there's not only towards the unbelievers, even to the points of believers as well, they still have their grudging viewpoints. Because of that great two past minded pastors. They are still arrogant enough not to change to the daily order of pulpit ministry. They are still canapes, stiff laws, blasting them with untempered mortars. 
they are causing them to still get half right of the things and make them if you are not giving tithes you will be certainly cursed and among all of these things the word of the Lord says let them do it I have the rewards in my own hand what they are going to do but it is of a great exhortation of warning to you all the way how our Lord said to show for the wrath of the Lord to show for the power of his might he has hardened the hearts of Pharaoh so that instead of his heart being hardened much more it might be much more than that the power of the word of the Lord was been evangelized so that the entire earth should know that tomorrow he doesn't have any chance to claim the way how the dead man which has been told in Luke chapter 16 the great parable where many pastors don't believe upon that parable the rich man and the Lazarus they say it is just like a story but it is not a real fact explaining them the divine content of the message it says for us that rich man begged to tell to send him once again so that his fellow, his fellow five brothers could not follow the same path where he is really hunger and thirst enough being squelched in the fire but what did Moses say to them Abraham said to them not Moses on this earth they are having Moses and his disciples if they would listen to him it's enough because their heart is so much hardened even if a man goes from the death they will not believe from the death again once again to be the preeminent among all those who have been dead the firstborn Colossians 1 18 the one who is preeminent among all because of him our Lord's will and recognition of good's plan were been made by Christ to be manifested for us we just only receive it by faith alone in Christ alone even that point being fulfilled our Lord went and that is one of the incidents that was happening between this road to Amamas the clear pastels have you been a stranger have you not known what are the things that were happening around in the Jerusalem these days? Even a man could go out from his death and be having his first resurrection, being preeminent among all. Even the people never believed, though he witnessed for 40 days, and we are much worried what he might have thought those 40 days appearing to the disciples, appearing to 500 men, appearing to the Samamas, but whatever he might have thought, he might have thought for them and their heart might have been burnt when they might have thought for them. Witness to the disciples to tell, to see that I have flesh, on, flesh and bones, but I don't have the blood because the person body doesn't have the blood. Give me something to eat, he hate and he proved them. But in today's Christendom, the morons are investigating, try to discover that the resurrection body could be through chronics, clionics, or XYZ methods, which they can certainly go evil, but never they will come to know the great power of the resurrection of the Lord. Lord will be laughing at them because cryonics tells to remove the blood and preserve it. And the scientific knowledge is causing them to believe those terms rather than believing the great word of the Lord which said I am the resurrection and the life and when our Lord says it is I am the resurrection and the life it is the Lord who has to provide a solution for it as he made a provision for this world when John the Baptist could tell behold the Lamb of the God which takes away the sin of this entire world so our Lord for this second death where many people will perish wherewith we can have a resurrection body when we are being not perished it is he who has to provide that solution and he's already the preeminent one in it and though he came in that flesh of the great resurrection body many people did not believe him some said it is his ghost the own disciples and in order to prove them that he was not ghost he said, give me something to eat. And we the church age believers, with the parable of that great Lazarus and the rich man, we have been told for them that though a dead man goes, they will not believe, rising up to life. The same mannerism of Pharaoh in Romans chapter 9 when we are able to read so that the wrath of the Lord could be manifested upon them and the power of Lord God Almighty could be made known to them he hardened their hearts though he was hardening their hearts 
he sent more people to witness, to witness, to witness. And we being the vessels of honor, we should be having our work only to be straight laid down in our mind to think we are witnesses for the truth. And how much more in this church age that discourse was been given for them while they were in the period of that Israelitic one from the period of the day of Pentecost till before that it goes to the dispensation of the Jews. Apart from the great discourse from John chapter 13 to 17, in the Gospels, everything belongs to the dispensation of the Jews. And during that time, the parable was told. Even if a dead man goes, they will not believe. They have prophets of Moses. And these disciples, let them believe. It's enough. But they will not believe. But after that, our Lord went, resurrected. Then today, they did not believe. Why among all these things, if they would have not known that they should believe in that great Lord God Almighty, certainly they will end up in the great wrath of the Lord. So in order to make them to know, and in order to see that when they claim a case before my Lord to tell, you have not witnessed me, certainly this generation of the people where Lord calls each and every believer to be an effective ambassadorship, the dispensation of the church age, in return the effective kingship, they should be the witnesses for which they have been born. They should be the answer to those people who claim that our Lord has not witnessed. They in return will stand up, those who have been there in the constant fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, walking in the heavenly path and not wasting their time in useless and worthless things. They will be the witnesses and Lord has raised and kept them chosen and separated them in fact even indeed every church age believer before the foundation of the world our Lord met them that is what foreknown means proganisco he did not meet them he, he just did not meet them so that he can have their pleasure on this earth after believing in the Lord and walk their life as usual as they can but he met them to tell whom I have foreknown them I have called whom I have called I have made them to prioritize on the predestination of Christ and what is the predestination to get confirmed summarfe to the image of his dear beloved son on this earth to witness so that there could be no one to raise his hand and finger to tell I was not been heard about this I was not been heard about that as they were now clear pastels to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who has been resurrected and their minds were being held up not to know that he was the Lord he said are you a stranger so that even you should not be called like that but in return our Lord could say to them when we are being witnesses for the truth to this world at the judgment seat of Christ are those believers who have lost the salvation which they have lost the rewards of their salvation by heeding up into wood and stubble rather than gold, silver and precious stones, our Lord would tell to them, were you a stranger, were you an alien to these things which have been revealed? Wasting your time by teaching for those gimmicks and pastoral tricks. Those things which the word of the Lord says, they don't have any place at all. Because the church tells the church is a ground and pillar of truth, Second Timothy, and we can find or oh, hear writing for us in Ephesians 3 10 the much variegated wisdom of God to be taught by the church. And church is not a place for gimmicks or tricks or miracles or healings. Church is a place where the people will come to seek and learn the word of the Lord by daily exegesis, by daily isagogies, by daily categorization with the right dispensing technique of dispensations. And church is the place where the people will come. And if you don't be there for witnesses of that truth, then certainly our Lord will tell for you at the judgment seat of Christ when you're pleading ignorances. Where are you a stranger? Have you not known that I have given to you the completed canon of scripture? Have you not known the polytheism of privileges given to you? Have you not known the baptism of blood, God, the Holy Spirit? Right from the day when you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, have you not known that your temple is the body of God? This body is nothing but the temple of God where the Shekinah glory wants to indwell in it. Have you not known the things that have happened now, the things that have changed now? And you may plead your ignorance to say, Lord, I don't know. So what? You have not taken heed to confess your sins. You have not taken to prove yourself the righteous one. You have not taken to walk in the path of integrity, of great uprightness. You have chosen the other path, the other path towards your roles in nature to be covered, to have your attitude holier than thou. 
And you thought you can get back the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. By your gimmicks, by your tricks, by your offerings, by your sacrifices. Lord doesn't have pleasure in them. Lord has pleasure only to obey his word. And his word tells, be confession of your sins. 1 John 1, 9. Does not the Old Testament give a great historical records? Nehemiah chapter 9. Nehemiah chapter 8. Daniel chapter 9. Ezra chapter 7. The confession of their sins, even including their fathers. So that they could get back into the fellowship of Lord God Almighty. But right now in the church age, it is not for the confession of your father or your mother. It is the confession of your own sins, individual sins, because you have been given the privacy of your priesthood. And we the believers have been given this great privilege, only the church age believers. When Cleophas told when his mind was held, there was a reason for it. But now the church age believers are being prayed not just to blepo, not just to have their telema opened, but they are being called for fortizo to shed light. And there will be no shedding of light until and unless you're going to take the responsibility for your sins that you do and you won't come up to take the privacy of your priesthood with the confession of your sins. Till that time there is no fortizo. There will be no controlling mentoring ministry of light God, the Holy Spirit, though it permanently indwells in you. It demands a clear consciousness. And majority of the people have gone to that which we shall call them as woody and stubble crowd, the softest crowd, the reasoning's crowd. How many days more you want to live a life without facing the facts? Your fiction's life, if not impressing of deception, lives or hypocritical manner may be happy to those who are fellow villagers with you, but not and never with God. How many days more you want to be in the dilemma of your thinking? How many days more you want to be ignorant? The Cleophas was being held, but he said, Are you a stranger? He spoke, Have you not known the things that have happened in this Jerusalem these days? But we are not being held like that now. We have been enlightened. We have been given the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to seek, to search, to find out. Your evolution is the key, dear brethren. Because much is given for us and much is expected from us. And our Lord said, those who seek me, I will be found by them. But the privilege for this church age, do you know what the Isaiah say? Those who have not sought me, I was been found by them. What a privilege it is. We the strangers, we do not know what exactly to do in this ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Our Lord says, you have not sought me, but I have been found by you. So that now you could be the witnesses and you could tell to those genius-minded men, a small baby, if he answers back to a genius-minded man, by witnessing and obeying the word of the Lord, how much anger that genius mind will have. The genius mind includes those unbelievers who have not believed in the Lord of the Israelite times. Even those genius mind will include that Satan and its fallen angels. They will be certainly ashamed when we believers are walking in the principal integrity of truth by obeying his voice and walking according to his truth. They will be certainly shocked because we have been given much and much is expected from us. And we cannot end up in those things which is once again the pride of life, the lust of flesh and the lust of eye. We cannot walk no longer in the things pertaining to this earth but we are being transformed from the kingdom of darkness into kingdom of light by the great divine power to be manifested in our lives through the daily intake of the word of the Lord and to be a witnesses, 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 witnesses towards the seen forces and unseen forces as well both. The seen forces are the physical men and women whom we see. Unseen forces are those invisible men, the principalities and the powers mentioned for us in Ephesians 3.10. And our Lord asked the Cleopas in John, Luke chapter 24 verses 19, What are these things? And they said, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and rulers delivered him and condemned him to death and crucified him.
But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. He is telling his conversations. Yet a certain woman also of our company made astonishment, which went up early to the speculator. And when they found not his body, they came again, that they have seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. As if our Lord doesn't know the conversation there is happening. The man being witnesses as per to the recorded truth. That is what you and I have been called, witnesses to the words that have been written. If it is a wheat, let it be a wheat. Let him speak faithfully, saith our Lord in Jeremiah 23. Why you need to add some things, why you need to delete some things. As it is, he was a witness's record. And he tells in verse number 24, And certain of them which were with us went to the specular and found it, even so as the woman has said, but they him they did not see my Lord. Then he said unto them, O fools! Our Lord said, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. When our Lord could call them fools, unminding ones, who have not certainly taken. Even the same thing our Lord could call today fools, slow of heart to believe, tardy ones of the heart to believe. The mystery doctrine being spoken for us, being written and kept for us, only when you read, when you can understand. That time our Lord could tell to Cleophas, you fools, slow to heart to believe. But now he could tell, you morons, not to know the power that has been given to you, not to know that your body has been indwelled by the Trinity, not to know that you have been made the temple of the living God, not to know that you have been the Shekinah glory, not to know that Lord and Savior Jesus Christ makes the path, not to know that Lord God the Father also makes path in you, and not to know that until unless we be there in you, you are not perfect. How much tardy of your heart it is. And the further conversation says in verse number 26, Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning to Moses and all the prophets, he expounded them the scriptures. And he drew himself, the, near, the village was near, and they said, Would he have gone further? And they constrained him, Abide with us, for it is evening, and the day is far spent. And he went into the tarry with them. And then furthermore, we have a great record there. What exactly happens when our Lord teaches, when our Lord certainly trains them up? What the scripture says, the further things it stands written, it came to pass as he said to meet, he took bread and blessed it and gave thanks for him. And then their eyes were opened and they knew that he was being vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened us to the scriptures. And the same hour, what did they do? Did they stop? They rose, they returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered and they were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they told the things in the way and how he has known of them in breaking of bread. They witnessed to this truth. Dear brethren, these things why we are telling to you all today. If our Lord could stand to say, fools, slow of your heart to believe, tardy of your hearts to believe. This great mystery doctrine you are going to lose that great blessedness which has been given only for this church age believers. And if the pastor teacher could train us today to tell to those kleptes, lestes, misthotes, thupas, to teach to them those who are canapes, thiflos and sharuras, have you not known these things? Are you a stranger? And if they could change, and if they could certainly take in the true account of the word, and certainly teach them um, about this mystery doctrine of the church age, then Lord wouldn't have called you at the Bhima throne of him. You fools, how slow you are in your heart to believe, or you might have believed the written things in this great mystery doctrine of the church age. Your great and unique spiritual life, the use of your life, godliness with great contentment, 
this great value of life only through the wisdom of Christ in the church wherewith you should teach them wherewith you should certainly make to understand by the point known as to be read the point that you should have to understand what it is to read and many people have gone not to have that mental apprehension it's regarding this mystery doctrine and they are not able to read to understand to understand to understand but here now in the church you should be the idea to write so that every word is accountable to the lord and when you write that you might understand the insight into this great mystery of the christ which in other ages and different generations was not not made known to the sons of men but now it has been revealed by the holy apostles and prophets by the indwelling ministry of lord god the holy spirit so where do you want to end up the church is a place where people should come to learn the sound wisdom of christ and if you are not at the judgment seat of christ lord will call you fools how tardy of your heart you are not to believe the truth the proclaimed by starting from the faithful ministers of this church age taken care of the torch by apostle paul and certainly till to the point of the rapture lord will produce and provide faithful men who are going to emphasize upon this great mystery doctrine and you are inexcusable for your ignorance is not to teach them for your ignorance is not to take number one priority for doctrine for your arrogance is not to train up in the word of the lord you are held responsible and by any means you should know this the cost of your life the cost of discipleship you should know that this life is unique and after you die you are there only to witness to certainly sort out your records if you are a believer you will be ending up in heaven not in hell but you will lose your records or your rewards but as an unbeliever because of your unfailure because of your failure to witness them for this truth when they held up in hell you will be held responsible for that so better we have been not born in this church age but we have been born in this church age with a great privilege to carry it because the good work which he has done in us it also claims that he is the one who is going to end it up till to the day of the day of our lord jesus christ appearance parousia personal presence and why i said it is not it would be better for us not to be born in this church age do you know why because in the old dispensation only the jews were been saved and they too had the work of responsibility of evangelism but they failed and they are excusable in a point to tell they are not been involved by the ministry of lord god the holy spirit but we the church age believers are inexcusable we are not at all excusable though we are not worthy to be involved by lord god the holy spirit he involves in us and therefore if you were born in the old testament time you would have been like gentiles and gentiles wouldn't have salvation but now for whom whom our lord has not been sought for them he has been found and that we are the gentiles for him and we being the gentiles for that great lord you should know not only just being saved you are been given the polity of privileges and how much more responsibility for you all to return with the whole filled spirit of law for which the new spirit has given for us for the jews he tells comparison to the good figs i have given them the heart and they shall return to me with the whole heart but for the church age believers he tells i have given them those unbelief those gentiles thy my mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit to indwell in them for the activated demon spirit in them the same thing they should return unto me with multiple times not just with the whole spirit but with much variegated wisdom of christ through the church to which our lord be the glory forever and forever only not just manifesting that but in fact even indeed teaching to those principalities and powers and rulers and authorities that by the church that we are been clearly given instruction to be trained in that and to certainly see that this people to whom our lord has chosen our lord has called our lord has made them to be available they are the one who are going to witness as professors to those angels so dear brethren think and consider over these things because life is too short responsibility laid down upon our shoulders 
is too large. Every day is a time for us to go and learn the word of the Lord, to seek the truth, to understand the truth, and to be a true and faithful witnesses for the truth. So which way you want to go, you decide, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order, we will telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ. That is the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple. Believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine. You shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to care to Sothan Lagan. Herald the word in season out of season because of this great diamond from my witnesses where they have been called. Number one diamond from my witnesses and will infinity followed by trinity. No, followed by Bible in our hands. Number two, diamond from my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to faithfully, rightly divide the word of the Lord. No matter however the chips may fall, not to worry about the fellow man astrocism, not to worry about the soft taste, but to only worry only one thing. Are we, like unprofitable slaves, are doing the work which our Lord has bestowed upon us in His great grace? Though we don't deserve earn and work for it, He has chosen us for His work before the foundation of this world to get confound many sons to his glory to the confirmation of his image by the bona fide gifted pastor teacher in training them up in perfection and complete and making them to stand in this church to the manifold wisdom of God to the principalities and the powers and the rulers and the authorities to be learned by the word and through the word itself that every believer being an ordinary one is an extraordinary positionally and in his life is manifesting through, to, through all the days of his life on this earth being kept alive whichever manner it could be rapture or death he has been glorifying to the Lord through the maximum and what is our work our work is to be there to prepare them for that glory not to worry and not to seek and not to understand about your glory only to seek the glory of the Lord and that glory of the Lord is what we have been chosen so that we should be standing before the judgment seat of Christ to proclaim to tell to them were you not a stranger because I have taught you these things and I have not sent to declare the entire counsel of the Lord, says Apostle Paul, so should be our footsteps following him. So which way you go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, we are very grateful for this great privilege that was given to our fellowship with you through thy word. Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, challenge us by this message so that they could truly understand the true calling in Christ and they could be readily available, not to be certainly taken the exhortation from you at the judgment seat of Christ to tell you fools how hard how tired you are to believe the truth. Help us to do it. Do thy work faithfully, Lord, so that they could also truly understand thy will, thy purpose, thy calling in the Lord. In Christ's name we pray, Sovereign Lord. May Lord get the Holy Spirit enlighten us. Amen.